So recently I've been streaming myself playing Pokemon Crystal where I try to get through the entire game without taking any damage. You can find all the streams I've done so far on this channel and it's been a ton of fun strategizing and talking with you guys in the chat. These aren't going to take the place of normal uploads or anything and I am working on the Ocarina of Time Iceberg video, though it's going very slowly. So with Generation 2 being on my mind as of late, this video is basically an in-between sort of video. Some of my favorite things in video games are secret areas or things off to the side that reward the player for exploring. It's always fun to know that you've discovered something that the developers hid there for you without being explicitly led to it. In Pokemon games, side areas are often where you find rare items or trainers, or most excitingly, a new Pokemon. The games that came out before Pokemon Gold and Silver exemplify this sort of thing really well. In Pokemon Red and Blue, there are a few dungeons that were never required for any sort of story progression, but contained legendary Pokemon that, if caught, could potentially carry you throughout the rest of the game. It's pretty much the perfect payoff for having to trudge through a difficult yet optional side area. The Kanto region in Generation 1 has 5 legendary Pokemon in total, but only 4 are obtainable within normal means, as Mew was only accessible through events or glitches. All of these legendaries, with the exception of Moltres, are found in optional side dungeons, which make up 3 of the 11 total dungeons found in this region. Pokemon Gold and Silver naturally contained elements like this similar to its predecessor, but what I want to analyze here today is, are the dungeons in Johto worth exploring? Now as I said previously, a dungeon in a game like this doesn't necessarily have to contain a legendary or otherwise powerful Pokemon to make it worth going through, as rare items or specific NPCs can make the journey worth it. A prime example of this is going through Diglett's tunnel to obtain the Flash HM, as well as an NPC who would trade an Abra for a Mr. Mime. Although even with all those extra considerations as to what makes a cave worth it, the Johto caves are kind of at the bottom of the barrel. Dark Cave is one of the first areas you can actually explore in Johto, although entering it as early as possible won't let you get very far. Once you come back with the appropriate moves to tackle it, those being Flash and Rock Smash, the biggest reward you can find in there is the Black Glasses item, which boosts the power of Dark-type moves. Dark Cave itself actually has multiple entrance and exit points, both of which are close to the cities which contain the 1st and 8th badges. Initially this would seem very promising, as being able to catch late game Pokemon relatively early on would be a large boon to almost any team. However, the farthest you'll be able to get when entering from the Violet City side of the cave is being dumped just south of Blackthorn City with a handful of uninteresting items and trainers, with the only option being to go south back onto the first route. The only rare Pokemon of note is Teddy Ursa, only in Crystal version, and Dun Sparse, which is insultingly rare in the originals and not worth hunting for. Overall, Dark Cave encapsulates everything that's annoying about old Pokemon dungeons. A cave where you need a bunch of HMs to explore it with stupidly rare yet useless Pokemon, and almost no payoff for exploring. Pretty much nothing justifies its existence, but on the bright side, it's all uphill from here. This dungeon is sandwiched in between two important cities in Johto, being Ekertik City and Mahogany Town. While it also requires numerous HMs to properly traverse, it has considerably more useful rewards, the main one being an egg given to you at the deepest part of the cave. While not a legendary Pokemon, this is the only place in the game where you can get the baby Pokemon Tyrogue, who can evolve into one of three different powerful fighting types, being Hitmonchan, Hitmonlee, and Hitmontop. This feels like a very Johto sort of reward, since things like eggs and branching evolutions for old Pokemon were big additions to the generation. The main problem with Tyrogue not being a catchable encounter is that you need an empty slot in your party for its egg, leading many players to have to make a begrudging second run through. Other than that though, Mount Mortar is huge, and like Dark Cave doesn't have a lot in it, but is definitely better. I've avoided talking about dungeons that are inherently tied to story progression as those ones don't really fit the topic of this video. The point here is to analyze them and see if they're worth making the detour for. For dungeons like the Slowpoke Well or the Rocket Hideout, you don't really get a choice of going through them or not. While in the original Johto games, going through the Whirl Islands and the Bell Tower was not required to progress the story, it was made mandatory in the remakes, 
where Ho and Lugia were given more of a presence in the story in order to fit with the mainline Pokemon conventions of catching the thing in the box. Whirl Islands is a considerably harder dungeon to navigate than the Tin Tower, as it has multiple entry points and requires more HMs. This is mostly due to Lugia being inserted into Gen 2 later in development than Ho-Oh, although with all that being said, I shouldn't have to tell you that going after either of these two Pokemon is well worth it, even in the games where they're optional. While Union Cave is again required to get from point A to point B, there is a surprising amount of extra content within it that many players end up bypassing. If you use the Surf HM, you can actually access parts of this cave that have a few stronger trainers, but most interestingly, you can catch Lapras on Fridays. There's actually a trainer in the upper floors of the cave that hints at this, which is pretty cool. Also, through Union Cave, you can access the Ruins of Alf. However, when exiting through Union Cave and getting to the Ruins of Alf, you have access to this patch of grass, which allows you to catch Pokémon that can't be found anywhere else in the game. I guess while I'm here, I'll just talk about the Ruins of Alf. The Ruins of Alf is an incredibly uninteresting dungeon with one Pokémon being unknown. Completing these slide puzzles allows you to find different forms of unknown, which are equally useless. And ending on that note, I think that's a good point to wrap up the video. The Johto region is quite interesting, but I think the main reason I like the Generation 2 games and their remakes is just the side content. The Kanto region opening up to you after you beat the game is one of the most satisfying things in any video game I've played. Just having the entire region that you can do at your own pace is really cool, and I think that if that same sort of exploratory nature was applied to the Johto region, letting you go through caves and access different gyms at your own pace, it would have made the region itself feel a lot better, instead of having the Gen 2 games being carried by its post-game. But even if the dungeons in the Johto region do kinda suck, at least it has dungeons. Thank you so much for watching. I've been working on the Ocarina of Time video, but as I said, things have been going pretty slowly. I do intend to do more Pokemon Crystal streams, but obviously those take a lot of effort because it's quite slow to be going through the game and resetting every time you take damage, but they are a lot of fun. They do require a lot less work after the fact because there's no real editing I have to do. Uh, if you guys want to see highlight videos of those, please let me know because I don't know, I feel like they could be interesting, but also, like, I don't know what I would really include since most of it is just grinding and doing the same thing over and over again. I don't know, just let me know in the comments or whatever. Subscribe, like the video, comment, do whatever. Thank you again, goodbye.